I want you to start believing in your potential the same way you believe in gravity and oxygen. Just because you can't see gravity, you don't, you doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Just because you can't see oxygen, you don't argue against it with somebody. Well, it's not real. It's not a thing because I can't see it. Now, there are three ways generally that we self-sabotage when it comes to our diets and eating, right? Either, either you, you sort of start losing weight and then you, you sort of backpedal. So like you start losing some weight, but then there's something in you that's just like, this is not for me. Like, no, no, I can't change. I don't know what's going to be on the other side of this. I can't change. I don't know what's going to be on this side. I won't know who I am without this weight. Like, this is all I've ever known. You start changing and then you just go in the weight back. Like, so you just spend your whole life, three steps forward, four steps back. Like or two steps forward, three steps back, all that type of thing. That's the first way. Second way we self-sabotage when it comes to our weight is we lose the weight and then immediately, you get, you know what, so we've all done this. We've all done this. You get to go weight, lost 20 kilos, woohoo, it's fantastic. And then you go off your diet, as I just said, and you gain it back. That's the second way. Because, and not because we're sitting there shoving cake. Usually you do go through a period where you start shoving cake in and things like that because you're like, I deserve it. I've earned it now because I've arrived and we start eating just stupid, crazy stuff. But they're eventually just even eating at a normal rate will put that weight back on because it's no longer the restricted diet food. The third way that we screw ourselves over, and I feel like it's really the saddest way, and I've done all of these, by the way, like all of them, and I've spent the longest amount of time in this third phase, which is the sad one, which is where you you do restrict and deprive and you lose the weight and it's, and it's fantastic, but you are now so scared of food and calories and eating and gaining that weight back that you legit cannot even enjoy what you have created for yourself. You're just terrified. Like you jump on the scales every two seconds. Like, oh my God, I'm going to gain weight back. Like, oh, no. and it just, it messes with your head. It fucks with your mind. It's all you can think about. You're just looking at yourself in the mirror all the time. Like you're so scared, so scared to gain the weight back. And that's just really shit too, because you've created something for yourself that you, you were like, this is what I've always wanted. This is everything I've always wanted but you can't even enjoy it for one second because you're terrified of losing it. Put an emoji in the comments if you've ever been there because I'm telling you, it's not a fun place to live, not. And I, I mean, I lived there for probably 18 months. I think it was after I did this really hardcore juice cleanse and then I just couldn't eat anything for 18 months because otherwise I would have gained the weight back. And as if, like, how is that? How can that be a thing? It's not a thing. So I really just want to emphasize this that you can't, you can't, whatever path you reach, take to reach your walk, whatever path you walk to reach your destination is how you're going to feel when you get, you're going to be that way when you get there. So if you're walking a path of shame, blame, deprivation, guilt, like, can't eat that, can't get the calories, don't think it's going to be different when you reach where you want to be. It will not be different. It will be exactly the same. You'll also be, can't count the, count the calories. I've got to make sure when you get there. So that's, that's shit, really. That's no, that's no fun either. Now, the second, the second thing that I really want to emphasize here, one of the sort of second principles really of the boot camp, is for you to just let shit go. Holding on to anything that is not uplifting, growing you in any way, expansive, if you're holding on to it, let it go. It's not good. If it's not doing those things, if it's not fostering that within you, let it go. Let it go. Because I want to tell you. I want to remind you that anything you've done, like I binged last night, I ate too much, or why can't I even start this? I promise myself it's going to be different. Oh, I just let it go. You did, all of us are only ever doing the best we can in any particular moment in time. So we're only ever doing the best that we can. It might look like a pretty poor ass effort, but there is something there. It is the best that you can muster up at that time. It really is because there's always a reason. If you're holding yourself back, there's a reason. It's not because you're a loser. So because you don't like yourself, it's none of those things. It's always a self-protection mechanism. So the, the road out of that is figuring out what is it do I think I'm, what is it that I think I'm protecting myself from? What is it that I think is on the other side of this that could be so scary? And when I ask this with private clients, it's like, 
they're like, but nothing. Like, I just weight loss awaits me and, and a fabulous life. Well, not no. No, otherwise you would have been there six months ago. This is something to dive in further. It's something we can look at in private one-on-one -on -one coaching. So certainly send me a DM if this is something that you want to just have a chat about. Just have a chat about. But it is it is 100% the only, and you can't tell me otherwise, that's the only reason why we hold ourselves back. The third principle that I just want to sort of reiterate and remind you all of, <laughs> just bear with me please excuse me is um yes, oh God, who set this up it was me people it was me the third principle is that pain is a part of life you can't avoid it you can't run fast enough to escape it we know this because we have experienced it in other sections of our life i want you to know that nobody not Beyonce, not Oprah, nobody gets a free bypass from experiencing pain to some degree, in some level. Let me just try and shift this a little bit. Okay. Damn it. So just please do remember that as you go through and start implementing these eating codes, anything new in your life is going to feel uncomfortable. Can we just take a second? Of course it does. Of course it is. Anything. Learning a new sport, you have those moments of uncertainty, like any a new job. Oh my god, uncomfortable, awkward, awkward, awkward. Let's say it again. It's awkward. So this is what it's about. Please remember, it's going to be there. So it's normal, it's natural. If you feel uncomfortable, you're doing it right. There's two types of deprivation in life. You can either deprive yourself of you can either deprive yourself of what did I write down? Yeah. You can either deprive yourself of the chocolate cake now, or you can deprive yourself of being in the body that you feel most comfortable in, of living your most biggest, healthiest life. Like you can deprive yourself of that. But either way, you're going to be depriving yourself. So you better be very fucking clear is really all I want to say. Don't think that by eating the cake, you've just like got the free pass. Like who avoided the discomfort of not eating the cake? That's what we think. When I eat the cake, I've just like avoided the discomfort that I was feeling by not eating the cake. That's great. Clapping hand emojis for you. But you've also now deprived yourself of feeling good, feeling good in your stomach because maybe, you know, you get glu gluten intolerance and you get bloating and blah, blah, blah. You've deprived yourself of that, of feeling good, of feeling proud of yourself, of, of moving forward, like all of the things. Do you know what I mean? There's, oh, honeys, there's always a flip side. Don't even try and fool yourself and think that there isn't. So final thing I did want to remind you, my gorgeous, fabulous creatures, is that... I need a better place for this drink. I'm so sorry. Please just bear with me. I feel my voice getting a bit croaky already. Um, please do remember to download your, your masterclasses, these live masterclasses. So they will live here in the Facebook group forever. That's fine. I mean, I won't take them out. <laughs> They'll be here, so you can always access them here. But if you want the audios only or something like that, they're all up on the, on the, um, I do this every week. On, uh, uh. They're on the membership site. They're on the membership site. So you can download those from there. They're only going to live there um, for a few months after, a couple of months probably, probably after this round closes. So I have a question that I want to go through today. And, it's, and I love it because it's right on line with what we've been talking about now for the last 20 minutes. And it's that, um, and I'm not, there's no name attached to this one. So everybody, she says, everybody knows me as the bigger girl in quotation marks. Everybody knows me as the bigger girl. It's who I am. She says, it's who I am. Even with the eating codes, I'm scared of what will happen if I change and I'm not the big girl anymore. She says, thank you so much for this. I really love the program. Uh, but I'm still so scared. So I want to talk a little bit here about uh, ident identity, identity, and sort of cases of mistaken identity and identity theft, which is something we are very aware of now in this day and age. Identity theft was probably really unknown, you know, in many years gone by. But identity theft now is a big thing. So while we do that, there we go. Problem solved. Problem solved, baby. Mess with me. <laughs> You're going to be in trouble. So let's talk a little bit about this. So this particular question here from this beautiful girl, 
She's like, I've always been the bigger girl. Like, it's who I am. It's, um, she doesn't say anything like it's who my family knows me as or anything like that. But I will say very often, very often, you know, like in the workplace, I'll go, oh, um, just ask that girl. I don't, I'm just making up names. Just ask Amy over there. She's the bigger girl in payroll. We use descriptives. Now, this gorgeous girl here, she says, everybody knows me as the bigger girl. She's, and she says, it's who I am. So there's a part of her that's already like accepted it as this is my identity. Everybody knows me as the bigger girl. It's who I am. I'm scared of what will, ha I'm scared of what will happen if I change and I'm not the big girl anymore. I mean, so much in this that we could unpack. So let's have a little talk about identity, mistaken identity, identity theft, all these types of things, because at some point we take on labels in our life. Now I could talk to you about the science behind it, which we've sort of mentioned a little bit in the past about the part of our brain that the, 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 the technical term is the reticular activating system. Um, for short, they call it the RAS, but it's the part of our brain that literally, that literally only lets in information wise. It only lets in things that it believes are relevant to you, to who you are, to your identity and to your goals. And it will, it will literally, I keep saying very literally, it will lit, but it will literally block out. You won't even see anything else. Now, you know this, you, we've all experienced this when we bought a car. Now, let's just say, I don't know, let's just say a black Range Rover, but whatever, let's just say a black Range Rover, okay? Now, they're on the road, they're probably a dime a dozen, they're everywhere, but you decide to buy one and you don't notice them, you don't notice them. They're all over the place, you don't notice them. But you decide to buy one, suddenly you see them everywhere because your RAS has decided this is important to her. This is something that she's been focusing on. This must be important to her. Every time we see it, point it out, point it out, put 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 it out. Now, let's switch it over. Every time you go to the mirror, you tell yourself what a fat, ugly hoe you are. Oh, some charming language I'm coming out with today. You tell yourself how fat and ugly you are. So now your brain has gone, well, this is who she is. This is who she believes she is. Anyway, this must be very important to her because she thinks she, she thinks these thoughts all the time. So every time there is even the slightest bit of micro information that can back up your beliefs about yourself, it's going to point it out to you. There, there, that magazine that says only skinny women are beautiful. There. Oh, yes, yeah, social media. Can't you see the beach babes and the, and the, you know, the bodies and the blah, blah, blah. So again, you're not beautiful. Um, yeah, the clothes that don't fit you, the person that said you're fat, the this, the that, the, it's going to point all out, all. You walk past the shop window and it's like a hall of mirrors. It's like your ass is like 5,000 times bigger, even than it is. And you're just like, I knew it. I knew it because the RAS is picking it up for you. Now, let's be very clear. There is also, because for everything, there is all an equal and opposite to everything. There is an equal and opposite to everything. So there is an equal opposite amount of information to prove that you are none of those damn things. None. But you're not seeing it. Oh no, honey, you're not seeing it because your RAS all up here in your grill, just going, that's not who she is though. So we just, we block those out. She literally won't even see the things that point out that how sexy curvy bodies are in and how gorgeous she actually is at the moment and how there's, she just looks stunning and like, no, that shit, it's there. Oh, it's there. But you're not seeing it because your RAS has shut that shit down. It's not important to you because you never think about it. You never say it to yourself. You never any of that. So it's like, let's not waste space. Let's not waste space. Only let the things in that affirm what she focuses on and what she believes. I cannot tell you how important this is. Please hear me. Please hear me when I say this. And I feel like I used to get a lot more excited in the masterclasses, but my voice several years ago now, many years actually, I heard it never really recovered so I really should have thought about my water my what the water factor more before I did that but so let's relate this back at some point she has related to, she has related to the fact that she's the bigger girl and she's just taking this on as her identity worse worse come on honey worst thing you can do now worst thing you can do people can call you whatever you want I don't care what they call me it's no it makes no difference to me it's just roll off my my like a duck water on the back that's how much I care about it. 
it rolls off like a duck water on the back that's something that my partner phil would say because he's korean and he's like and he's like he's been here for a thousand years but sometimes he doesn't get the like the slang the way we say things like if i said oh it just rolls off like water off a duck's back he'd be like roll off like duck water on a back like, and i'm sure he's thrilled that i shared all this with you so if you have taken on the identity of this is who I am, this is the bigger girl, that was so random and irrelevant, wasn't it? If you've taken this on, this is who I am, I'm the bigger girl, then, then that is who you truly believe you are. And of course, you're going to be scared to change that. This is now your entire self-identity. As I say so many times, nobody wants to wake up and feel like they've got amnesia and doesn't, doesn't know who they are. We need to be very rock solid in our identity. So if there's a part of you that is not sure who you're going to be, once you lose the weight, you're going to have a huge ass problem trying to lose that weight, girl. You won't, like you just won't. You won't do it. You won't. You'll do any one of those three things that I mentioned earlier. You'll either take two steps forward and three steps back, or you'll you'll lose the weight. Like you'll do the oh, the whole thing, and then you'll just gain it all back. Not even not not on purpose. Of course, not on purpose. It just happens. It just seems to happen. That will happen. Or, honey, like I said, you will lose a damn weight, and you'll be skinny as a little whippet. But you will not enjoy it for one second. You'll be tortured by it. In fact, it will be torturous to you. So you have to believe in who it is that you want to become. And you have to be very fucking comfortable with who this version of you is going to be. Because otherwise, what you have right now is a case of mistaken identity. You've taken on an identity that isn't you, doesn't belong to you. Somehow it's rolled into your world and you accepted it and latched onto it and went, oh, yeah, I'll take that. That'll be me. I don't think so, my friend. I don't think so. No. This is nothing more than, like you hear me say, this is a belief. It is only a belief. It is nothing more than a belief. And a belief is something that you plucked out of the air, decided it was true, and then repeated it to yourself enough times that now if someone tells you different, you'll fight to the death. Ch fight to the death. You're like, no, no, what? No. Like, it's like somebody telling you the sky isn't blue. You're like, the sky is damn blue. What is the matter with you? Of course the sky is blue, you dumbass. Like, you'll fight because it, you, like, no, you just know. You know it's true. So I really want to reiterate to you, especially here where she says, everyone knows me as the bigger girl. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared of who I will be without this. As long as you're scared, you will never, never, like, I would just say, save yourself the trouble. Don't even try. As long as you're scared, you'll never move towards what you want. You just won't. Because you know you want it, but you won't go there. You won't. Because you're scared. You don't, here's the thing. Here's what I want to tell you about fear. You don't, here, listen, set, you really need to write this shit down. This is good. The second thing I want to tell you today about fear is that if you, what was I going to say? You don't need to be scared about what tomorrow, like what is, you're going to look like tomorrow and what is going to happen once I lose the weight, whatever. You don't need to be scared of what is going to happen regarding all of that tomorrow because you're creating it today. You're creating it right now. It's, it's all within your power. This is within your power. Nothing weird and wild is going to happen. Nothing's going to come out of the blue and, like, Shh, and you're just going to be suddenly changed. No, you're creating it every step of the way, every step with your micro changes. That's how it's happening. So what will life be like? If you're different, let's visualize it. Let's write it out. Let's get savvy with it. Let's get switched on. Okay, I'll let me decide what is it actually going to be like. Let's work this shit out so that it's not scary. It's not frightening. And it's sure as fuck not like, you know, too scary or like wild and out there that you don't want to move towards it. Mm -mm -mm. No, we don't want that happening. So decide what it's going to be like instead of waiting to see. Nobody's, I don't know, just know. No, we're not going to sit around and wait to see what it's going to be like. I'll just wait and see, see what lands on me. No, thank you. No, you're going to write it out and decide now. This is who I am. This is what I look like. When I'm at the weight that I want to be at. So think about it. This is how I would start the journal prompt. Don't start it like when I'm at the weight I want to be at. No, that's wrong. Don't do that. Right. And I don't normally ever say things. Something is right and something is wrong, but I'm telling you flat out that's wrong. Don't do it like that. The way you would start it is because, because, because let me explain, because it keeps it in the future. Because it's like, when I'm at the weight that I want to be at, well, when, when is that? When? That's like airy fairy, fairy dust. Like it's ridiculous. You start it with now that I'm at the weight that makes me feel happy and energized and enlivened and, you know, vibrant every day. Now that I'm at that weight, 
my body looks like this. My energy levels are like this. My sex drive is like this. My friendships are like this. My relationships are like this. And you write that shit out so that it, you really feel it. Like you really feel it inside. And it becomes so real to you that it's exciting. You can't wait to start moving towards it. That's what I mean when I'm talking about get savvy about who it is that you want to be. So with all of this in mind, with all of this in mind, let me just check because I probably have just skipped forward here with a few steps up, but I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. Here's what I want to sort of round it up with sort of thing. Round it up with. Here's what I want you to get. I really, girls, I really want, I want you to start believing in your potential the same way you believe in gravity and oxygen pausing for emphasis there. I want you to believe in your potential to, to the same degree that you believe in gravity and oxygen. Just because you can't see gravity, you don't, you doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Just because you can't see oxygen, you don't argue against it with somebody. Well, it's not real. It's not a thing because I can't see it. No, no, you don't do that. You don't defy gravity and go try jump off a building to prove that it's, it's not true. It's not true because I can't see it. No, you believe in it, even though it's completely intangible. I want you to believe in your potential the way you believe in gravity and oxygen. You just know it. You just believe it. Like, it's completely non-negotiable to you. Like, of course it's real. Don't be so stupid and ridiculous. It's real. Yes, it's real. So is your potential. So is your ability. So is the million, million, millions of things that you can achieve that are yet completely untapped into. I want you to believe fiercely in that the same way that you would believe in gravity and oxygen. You don't mess with that. You don't mess with gravity and oxygen. You don't stick your head underwater and just go, I'll be fine because you know you're going to run out of oxygen. You like, you know it. You don't mess with it. You don't mess with it. I want you to think about your potential the same damn way. All beliefs, now this is the other thing I want you to get, all false beliefs that you have about yourself currently, as you start to release them, it will feel very unstable and very shaky. Of course it will. As you start to release and let go of any false belief that, beliefs that you're currently holding about yourself, of course it's going to feel very shaky and unstable and you're not sure. But honey, this is what I want to remind you. Nothing is more unstable than the false beliefs that you're currently trying to live by. Nothing's more unstable than that. I'm <laughs> you